Sí. Welcome everyone to tonight's Michael's class on uh, fall leaf studies in watercolor. I am your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and I'm joining you from my home studio desk in Austin, Texas. This is a technique, well, I guess it was listed as a, a part two. I can't recall if it said part one or part two, but this is a follow-up to last week's class on uh, sketching fall leaves. So if you joined us last week, I saw that we had a few more signups this week than last week. So if you missed it, uh, our moderator should be dropping the link to that class in, in the chat. Um, from last week, it was uh, sketching fall leaves or fall leaf studies, uh, something to that effect. Um, and then this week we're gonna be painting the uh, fall leaves using uh, some watercolors. So uh, thank you all for joining me. I know we have a lot of regulars who come every week and it's always so nice to, to see you all. And uh, hopefully we've got some new faces tonight because I saw a lot of a lot of signups for, for this one. Um, I just want to mention the classes that we have coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks. So uh, we don't have a class on Thanksgiving, but we have a, a two or the week of Thanksgiving. But we have a two part class uh, that is starting next Wednesday, the 15th, and it is uh, color theory basics. So I'm very excited about that. We're going to have kind of a full page of notes on some uh, canvas paper or in a mixed media sketchbook would work as well. Um, anything that can handle some acrylic paint. So we're going to be using golden acrylic paint, but any acrylic paint that you have uh, will be fine. Although I will be using these specific primary colors that come in this uh, golden acrylic basic set. And we'll be mixing up all of our uh, secondary colors using the primary colors, and then we'll be creating uh, neutral tones using the primary and secondary colors. We will make a full value scale in uh, one color and then also a gray scale using black and white. We will create our own black uh, using the colors that we mixed from the primary colors. And we'll also be creating some uh, pastels and some gray tones. Um, with some, some colors in them. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Color theory is something that comes up all the time, and it's something that I have uh, covered, you know, here and there quite a bit, but I've never done an in-depth uh, color theory class uh, in this series for Michael. So I'm excited about that, and it is free, and make sure you sign up if you're watching later on YouTube. You can um, find those classes on the Michaels website where um, under online classes for, for Michaels. All right, I'm gonna switch to my tabletop view and I will go over supplies and we'll get started here. Okay, so we're gonna end up with a product that looks perhaps something like this tonight. Uh, results may vary. Uh, don't forget to tag your work with the hashtags Make It With Michaels or Michaels Classes. And you can follow me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art. It was even right there in the, the sign up for the class has my Instagram handle as well. So I'm easy to find. And here's a little bit of my work on some of my business cards. I'm also on Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art. Let me get it not to have a glare there. Okay, so... We've got a lot of supplies for this one, although we're not gonna be using some of the supplies uh, that we used last week since we've already done the sketching part. Um, so we don't really need our sketchbook uh, too much more. We're gonna be using some watercolor paper. So I had the Strathmore watercolor paper on the supply list, but I went and used up all my paper in that pad and forgot to buy a new one. So I'm gonna actually be using the Arches Aquarelle paper tonight, just if you're curious, and it seems like that's not the paper that I'm using, the one that, that I put in the supply list, but I also purchased that pad at Michael's as well. Um, but the only main difference is this one comes on a spiral, so um, you might wanna cut off the, the spiral pages later, and I did that uh, to this one. I can hold it up on screen in front of the screen so you can see where my margins are not perfect, had it upside down. Um, so this would have been where I cut the spiral off. 
Um, so we're going to tape off our margins and, you know, it's not perfectly even to the top to the bottom, but I don't think it matters then. I try to let go of perfectionism when it comes to stuff like that, but you're welcome to use a ruler and try to get your margins to be perfect. And we'll go over all that once we get rolling, but that's the paper that I'm using. Um, for the watercolor, we're using these really fun uh, Viviva color sheets. And I love this uh, brand and they come in these little sheets, just like they say, and just a little bit will go a very long way. And they already come with all of these colors that match what we're doing with the fall leaves tonight. Um, I know some of you are not going to have the exact same uh, brand of watercolors. Any watercolors will be perfectly fine. So I know there's always a question about substitutions um, in the chat for almost every class. Um, any water media will be fine. If you have any brand of watercolors, perfectly fine. If you've got um, some gouache, that's great too. If you've got some inks, that would be cool. If you've got acrylic paint, all those things we will dilute with water. Um, if you're working with acrylic paint, then you might want some canvas paper or maybe some gessoed uh, mixed media paper. So you'd have to prime some paper to reinforce it with gesso. But anyway, just trying to cut everybody off who might have a bunch of questions about substitutions because I know these are a bit of a niche uh, watercolor that we're using here, uh, these color sheets, but any uh, watercolor that you have will be fine, but I am going to be using these specific colors in here. So as far as color mixing and matching goes, I'm going to ask you to just do your best because we only have an hour, but if you're really struggling with color mixing, guess what? I have that class for you next week, color theory basics. Um, so make sure you join me for that if you struggle with your color mixing tonight, because like I said, I'm going to have uh, the color straight from the Vivivo watercolor sheets, and I'm not going to be needing, I'm not going to need to mix any colors. Okay, I've got a few paint brushes here. Um, I've got the Aqua Elite uh, round brush here. So basically, if you just have a round brush, a flat brush, and a liner brush, you will be fine. I'm not going to worry about if you have the exact same ones that were listed on the supply list because I'm willing to bet not everybody is going to. And hey, look, I have the actual leaf that we're, we're painting tonight. Okay, we're not done with supplies. We also have some uh, tape so we can tape down our margins like I discussed. You're going to want some paper towels. You're going to want a couple of water cups. Two is always a, a nice idea. And then we've got some white ink. So I've got the Windsor and Newton white ink. And then we've also got a white jelly roll pen. So that's how we're gonna add some of these fun kind of little sparkly bits to the, the painting here. And then we're also gonna draw on top and do a little fun stuff with, with the gel pen. Um, we will see how far we get if our painting does not get completely dried by the end of the class, um, then I may have to do my white gel pen drawing on this original example. So that may have to happen, you know, after the, the class ends for you, because you're going to want this to be completely dry before you try to draw on it with the jelly roll pen. So just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that, um, you know, we always have to race against the clock here with these one hour classes, but good news about that, we are actually gonna be switching to um, longer classes in December. So all of, instead of having four classes per month that are one hour each, I'm going to actually have uh, three classes per month and they're gonna be an hour and a half in length. So we'll get a little extra time for um, those of you who are always wanting more time with these classes. Okay, we're also using these uh, images that were provided on the supply list of this leaf that I just showed you on screen here. So I set up a little still life and I took all these photos of this leaf. I tried to get it from some different angles very strategically so that we could um, really capture it and make it feel like it's falling in motion. And folks did an amazing job last week in the sketching class of capturing this leaf in a lot of different ways. I loved all the unique styles that were coming across in our sketches and uh, different ways that you were 
you know, putting your own spin on this project. And I love to see it, you know, we're not robots, so we can't expect that our, our finished products are all gonna look identical to each other. So I always just want you to embrace, you know, your unique, what you bring to the table that's gonna be different uh, than anybody else. Um, but if yours does look pretty close to mine, then that's cool too. You know, whatever happens, we're going to be okay with it. And then we also have these leaves that are like more in motion here for our blurry kind of far away leaves like these. So we really spent a lot of time last week discussing the contours of these leaves. And if uh, that is something that you are not familiar with, contours and value shapes, then you definitely want to check out uh, last week's class. But, you know, still stick around tonight and we'll try to get you, you know, as far as we can without that knowledge. Um, but I'm going to be referring to that information from the sketching class quite a bit because we really spent some time understanding how these uh, you know, values are wrapping around the curve of the leaf. Oh, excuse me. You saw a flash of a bunch of kid pics there. This is my iPad that my kids use all the time. Um, okay, so yeah, we really tried to make our lines wrap around and we're gonna do that same thing with our brush strokes tonight, um, but it's gonna happen really fast. So I just wanna, you know, mention that and just call back a little bit to last week's class and just talk about how we, you know, spent a full hour really understanding what this leaf looks like from all these different angles and how to capture it in movement and how to capture, uh, you know, its weight and its uh, angles and the contours and the value and all that good stuff. And so tonight we're just gonna be focusing on the painting techniques with the watercolor and I'm gonna sketch my leaves very quickly on the paper and it's gonna go super fast. And if that goes too fast for you and you're worried about you know, the drawing aspect of it because you didn't catch last week's class, then you know, just, oops, excuse me, uh, do your best. And then uh, you can go and check out last week's class to try to catch up. Because I just noticed there were a lot of people who signed up, um, more people signed up for this week than last week. Um, so I get, guess all that color grabbed your attention. So I just want to make sure I don't leave anybody in the dark, but also you may, you know, have some questions if you missed last week, but you can definitely still follow along with us uh, tonight. Okay, so I got a new sheet of my watercolor paper and I'm just going to go ahead and take my tape and create some margins here. So that's how I'm gonna get this clean line whenever I we're done and this is totally dry. We'll peel off our tape and we'll have this kind of implied frame on, on this piece. And I think doing this tends to elevate, you know, any simple little study or sketch like this. Also, I forgot to mention, I do have an eraser on hand, you know, if your pencil lines are still visible. Um, sometimes you can go in there with the eraser and, and erase your pencil lines. Just realized I had that on screen, but didn't talk about it. Also purchased that at Michael's. All these supplies were available at Michael's or on the Michael's website. Okay, so I'm just kind of going, I'm actually going in the middle of this paper since, or somewhat towards the top, but um, depending on your, you know, your paper size, I'm just doing this to keep it within the frame but uh, you should go towards the, I mean, if you want it to be floating in the middle of the page, you can do that as well. You could do this in the middle of your sketchbook as well. We have this sort of floating in the center of a, a sketchbook page on some watercolor paper. The possibilities are really endless. So I'm just putting some tape down, getting it nice and straight, and then if you want it, you know, at the edge of your paper, like I showed you with the other example, then just going half on and half off the edge of the paper. So I try to just hover like that uh, and you can kind of see through the tape like this. So you can see the edge of the paper and you can kind of measure with the tape to see that the, the tape is going half on and half off. And it's about, you know, the same width 
from top to bottom, and that's how you'll get a nice straight. You know, it might not be perfect, but we're, we're going to do our best. And if it is not perfect, like my other example I showed you wasn't perfect, right? It's not that noticeable. It's not a big deal. So, but you can get out a, you know, pencil and ruler if you want to measure your margins and make sure that they are evenly spaced. You're welcome to do that, of course. Okay, I'm going to actually go a little bit further in on the paper so that I'll get a rectangular frame here. And I have kind of weird, actually, I'll just make it wider. So this will just be a little different. Right. These things are always so time consuming, but worth it, worth the time and efforts. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to have a bit of a modified frame going here because I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep it in this frame so I don't have to move my camera around too much more. I say as I move my camera around. Okay, so let me quickly just sketch these leaves again. I'm not worried about details on these because we're going to paint all the details. Okay, so the first one was this one, and we made it kind of small. So I'm just getting kind of a, I know you're not going to see my sketch, so I'm just Honestly, I'm gonna look at at this for my my reference for a second here. So you can use all of those reference photos that I provided or use your sketch from last week's class. And yeah, if you don't have if you did not attend last week's class, then you're just using those reference photos that are provided and just doing your best here because we already spent the whole hour last week on the drawing part. So I got to zip this part along. Maybe you already have your sketch prepared. So we went a little bigger with, with the leaves each time. And then this one at the bottom was the only one that we had laying, like it's laying on the ground and it had a little shadow resting on the you know, the implied surface here. So the rest of them, we did not include a shadow. And yeah, we talked all about how to render and draw all these things last week. So I'm just filling it in super quickly here, super light, because we're gonna cover up all of this with our watercolor very shortly. And now I'm putting these smaller leaves in and we want those to feel kind of blurry and we might even you know we might go outside of our our lines here we might not stick to these shapes entirely like even with this example this perfect example how I let it just kind of bleed and be blurry so we're really not worried about some of these shapes we really want to let some of these shapes disappear into the background too so Adrian, for these folks who missed the uh, previous classes, do you have any sort of uh, where they could potentially get the reference photos? Oh, the reference photos should have been provided for this class as well, I, I thought. The same reference photos for both classes. Oh, I'm seeing somebody saying they were not. Um, well, that's always a bummer when that happens. That does not happen too often that the reference images were left out. Uh, give me just one moment. I can, if y'all don't mind me pausing for a second, I can get the, the Google Drive link and we can drop it in the chat. And then for those watching later on YouTube, um, if Nicole, are you able to email the Michaels people and let them know that that was not included? Yes, I can let them know. Okay, let me pull it up on 
And then I'm sure my arm is showing on the, well, maybe not. I can't tell. I have navigated away to find it on my Google Drive. Give me just a moment. That has only happened one other time before. Found them. Let me just copy the link and make it shareable. It's getting there. My internet is deciding to be really slow for a moment for some reason. Oh, anyone with the link, link copied. All right, so it looks like someone shared it in chat, so I'll see about getting that PDF link, uh, or I'll make sure to share that PDF so everyone can see it. I just shared it as well, so. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much, Adrian. I appreciate okay. you. They are one way or another, we, we're going to get them to you. All right. Well, that was a little stressful. Yeah, that does, that has only happened one other time before that I can think of where the reference images were not included like that. Okay. Um. So we got them sketched out. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my pencil aside and start prepping my uh, watercolors now. And let's see how we doing on time. We're okay, we got 40 minutes ish. Okay, so yeah, super easy for me because I already have these colors already mixed. And yeah, there's a side of me that like wants to just like slow it way down and show you how to mix and match all these colors. But let's just say in any watercolor set that you have, you're going to have a couple of reds, you're going to have a couple of yellows, you're going to have an orange, you're going to have a brown, maybe even two browns. So hopefully you do have those things. Um, and if you don't, then you can mix your red and your yellows and your browns together. And that'll give you some really interesting fall uh, inspired colors that should match these but I'm just going straight from from these and I can tell which ones I used because they leave a little <laughs> I've only used these for Michael's class planning so far um so I'm going to take a separate piece of paper and a watercolor sketchbook like I did here and this is a little sketch of some blind contour hand drawings. We've got some classes coming up in uh, December on that that I'm very excited about if you're unsure of what that is. And we've done that before as well. But anyway, that's what I happen to have on the same page where I did this, this test. And then let me just get a new blank page going here and I'll do a similar test of these colors. So, Whatever colors that you have, let's go ahead and just do a little test of them real quick and see what we're, we're working with so we can kind of prepare our palette. So I'm just taking my round brush and some of my water and I'm just going to go through and I'm trying not to touch too much on here because the more water I add, if you, hopefully some of you do have these Viviva color sheets because they're really fun. Um, and so... I feel like I'm teaching to everybody who doesn't have them, but for those of you who do, just a tiny little dab of these is all you need. And you're gonna notice, whoop, like I just did it right as I was trying to say, try not to do that. Try not to get it too wet because it does say on the like cover or somewhere on the box, it does say 
that you want to let these dry before you turn the page, but we just don't have that luxury tonight with our time. So we are going to have to turn the pages before they dry. And so we are going to maybe end up with some like sticky moments there on the, uh, the little paper that comes with them. And you can, I did blot it with a paper towel the last time because I was, you know, impatient waiting for each one to dry. So that's an option is to just blot it with the paper towel. You might lose some pigment when you do that. Like it's going to pull more out of the little, you know, sheet of color um, more than it would than if you had let it dry naturally. But, you know, it's just the nature of needing to, to zip us along here. Okay, so that was the crimson and the deep pink. I'm gonna do a little bit of this vermilion as well. And yeah, this vermilion kind of has a little orangey uh, feel to it. They really just kind of go down the line here in color from red to orange. So that vermilion has a red or an orange feel to it. And you can, you know, try mixing a couple of these together on your palette if you'd like. And we want to, you know, use a bit of water to activate it and get a nice little swatch going, but we don't need, right now we don't need too much water. And one thing I just realized I forgot to mention when we were talking about supplies, you do, it would be good to have a palette on hand for these so that we can make a wash of these colors. So a plastic palette, I've got one off to the side here. And then for the inks, um, you might want a little dish or something, or you can use your plastic palette as well. Um, well we're gonna make some washes of these in just a minute, meaning we're gonna add some color to our, our palette and then we're gonna really water it down. So I'm just kind of dabbing it with my paper towel and see it kind of pull some out, but just so I can turn the page because we just don't have the time to let it, let it dry. I'm gonna skip over the chrome yellow Although I forget what did the chrome yellow look like. I'm like, I'm gonna skip it. And then I, yeah, I don't think we need that yellow too much. Maybe, maybe a little. No, I think it was this yellow okra was the one I used the most. Yeah, that yellow okra is definitely our friend. And this painting, oh, but I gotta turn the page and it's so wet there. This is the one thing about these. It's better if you can take your time and not need to, <laughs> to turn the, the page on these so quickly. Um, and then we've got our burnt umber. And then our burnt sienna. And then we want a couple of greens. And those are on the next page. But yeah, these are so portable and so easy to, I mean, talk about lightweight. Can't say enough good things about these color sheets. So fun. Okay, so we're going to use the light green. If our leaf has, oh wait, that's not the green we want. That green is way too bright. We're going to use the sap green. It might just cover up that light green with the sap green and then do another swatch with just the sap green so you can see it by itself. So it's kind of like an army green there. Okay, so those are the colors that we're using. Something to that effect in your, your watercolor set. So let me move those aside. Okay, so we're gonna paint, we're gonna go from background to foreground here. We're gonna do our background first and we've got our tape taping off our margins here so we can get nice and watery all around these edges. And then, uh, but we're gonna leave a little gap. So wherever you drew your leaf shape, your kind of soft triangle shapes for these leaves because we don't need a whole lot of detail for our sketches right now. So we've got kind of like a soft, hexagon down here, a soft like cereal bowl shape with some triangles, 
soft triangles, you know, just keep it real loose and sketchy. But we want to leave a little gap. So think about like I uh, whenever I've taught uh, younger kids, you know, when you talk about like cutting with scissors with kindergartners or first graders, how they're still kind of learning the dexterity of that precise cut around something. So you tell them to do a bubble cut where like, let's say you're cutting out a triangle, you cut like a bubble around the triangle. And then once you have the bubble cut out, then you cut the triangle into that smaller piece of paper. So think about kind of a bubble around your triangle shape. And that's what we're gonna leave it kind of blank um, in a, a bubble around our shapes. And you'll see what I mean as I get started here. Um, I'm gonna use the, uh, what was this, what's it called here? The yellow okra. And I'm using my flat brush. And yeah, let me grab my palette. It's just out of my reach over here. And so you want a little plastic palette and that, I don't recall if I had put that on the supply list or not, but any like a plastic lid would be fine. You know, we just need something to, to get a little wash going here. So we don't need to be super particular and we're not really mixing a whole bunch with these, but we do want um, to create a little puddle and that's gonna be easiest with a palette. Okay, so we're gonna really get a nice liberal amount of this yellow ochre going. And we're gonna make a little puddle of that. Although the more I think about it, there's faster, easier way we can do this. There was another class, by the way, that we had recently called Easy Watercolors that I meant to mention before now, but better now than never. Um, that was about a month or so back. And that class would be really helpful. If this is your first time working with watercolors, that easy watercolor class was very beginner friendly and helpful as far as washes. So I'm gonna take my clean water cup actually, and I'm gonna just go ahead and paint with just water all the way around these leaves. So I'm gonna paint the whole background. Um, I could even go ahead and paint over the blurry leaves, but these big leaves, those are the ones we're gonna leave just a little bit of space between our water. And yeah, this will be really fun. So we're gonna paint with just the water first on our watercolor paper. And we're leaving a little gap between the leaves. Oh, how did some pigment get in there? Somehow a little drop of red got in there. This is going to make our lives much easier. We're going to do a wet on wet technique and we're going to get a really fun background to happen really quickly by just painting with water first. And then we're going to splash in this yellow ochre color in just a bit. And that will give us bias a little bit of time too. So the whole background will be done very quickly. We're going to use our yellow okra and then we're going to add some burnt umber to the corners so we can create that vignette effect that I had on the other example. And then while this is drying, we're going to have that little gap between the background and the leaves. And so then we can work on the leaves without them bleeding into the background. So this is our strategy for dealing with our time restraint. It's gonna be to leave a little gap. And I did this with the other example too. And that's also, you maybe noticed there was a tiny bit of a gap between those backgrounds and the leaves. Okay, so you can't see it because I only painted with water, but I just painted the entire paper with water, with gaps around the, the main leaves. Okay, now I've got my yellow okra and I created a little puddle of that yellow okra. And I'm gonna take the direct okra and my puddle. I'm gonna go ahead and start splashing this in here and just letting it bleed around. 
Ooh, it is dripping down this little shoot. Hang on one second. Catch that drip. And honestly, you know, if your little Viviva color sheets get a little, a little messy through this process, I think that's fine. You know, art making is messy, so why not let it just embrace how messy it is? I'm gonna actually add even dilute it even more than I did, and I'm just gonna drag around this yellow that I already have on the page with some water. So I can let it be a little bit more transparent in some spots. And I'm really just going to embrace those kind of natural striations that happen when watercolor and water mixes. And I'm letting it be a little heavier. I'm starting in the corners so that it can be a little darker around the corners and we can get that vignette effect going. And I still have my little gap, minding the gap around the leaves. And I'm trying to fill this in really quick. I'm teaching a few in-person watercolor and mixed media watercolor classes at the moment. And I teach a lot of water media. I've got an ink class that I'm doing in person in Austin at the, the Contemporary Austin uh, Art School at Laguna Gloria. For those of you who are in the Austin area, I've been teaching a lot of in-person classes there and also at the Doherty Art Center in Austin recently. And one of the hardest things for beginners with watercolor to do is, or any water media, is to let each layer dry. Just let it dry before you do the next layer. Uh, folks get really impatient with wanting to see the results, you know, of something, just, you know, get to the finish line sometimes. And um, watercolor just has so many naturally cool things that it, it will do on its own, you don't really even have to do that much to make it happen. You just got to be patient and let it dry. Okay, so we got all this yellow ochre on here. Let's get some of this orange going too, and then we'll add some brown. So let's see, which orange was it? It was probably the dusk orange, I want to say. Let's grab some of that one. You can water it down as well if you'd like. You could maybe even mix it in with the, the yellow ochre ahead of time. But we just want to get a nice, you know, variation going here. So we're just going to kind of dot it in. You could maybe even go ahead and paint some of these blurry leaves while we're at it. I probably just covered them up. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't take much to imply a blurry leaf back there, right? But yeah, we're just dropping in some other interesting fall colors to our background here. And this is what I mean when I said, you know, all of ours are gonna look a little bit different. We might have different colors. I mean, my example so far right now, I've used different size paper. My margins are a little different. Um, so like the composition is a little different. It's more uh, horizontal landscape than it was. The other one was portrait and my colors are slightly different so far. So yeah, I'm also embracing some change here, which is appropriate because fall leaves are all about embracing change. Okay, I'm gonna flip to this burnt sienna here. And with the burnt sienna, I'm really gonna stick to, and the burnt umber, I'm gonna get them both going. So my two browns, I'm gonna really try to keep them in the corners so that I can get this vignette to happen. So while it's nice and wet, I'm adding my brown. I noticed the liberal amount of water I have used, which if you painted your paper with water first, then that should just, Sorry, I just bumped the camera. 
that should naturally be happening. If you didn't paint with water first, if you were, you know, maybe nervous about that for some reason, um, or just didn't want to do it for some reason or another, then hopefully you're using a liberal amount of water to get the this kind of bleed to happen with all these colors. All right, and then we're just going to leave that alone, let it dry. We'll start working on these leaves here. Okay, and how are we doing on time? 20 minutes. We're going to do our best. Okay, so yeah, I'm very going to just call it right now and say that I'm going to have to do the um, the white gel pen on the other example because this example is not going to be dry. Um, the, the leaves are not likely to be dry. Maybe the first one will be. We'll, we'll see. I'm going to stay optimistic. Okay. So I'm going to take my round brush again, this round brush, it's my friend, um, and I'm going to mess with my background some more, even though I just told you to leave yours alone, and jump to this green. I just love these colors so much that come in here, it's just so satisfying. Okay, so it was the sap green, right? That light green was a little too bright. So that's all we need is just our sap green. And again, we want a very liberal amount. Let's go ahead and just paint a little bit of green on all of these leaves. Let's do it all at once. So I got some water going with it and I might even kind of use that as like a little pool. So I'm still leaving that gap. Because right now, if I touch that yellow okra area with my green, it's going to bleed green everywhere. I'm kind of taken from that little bit of green up there. And I'm getting it, you know, pretty watery. And I'm just spreading it around to all of the leaves, getting a little bit of green on the edges of them. And I did look at the reference photos when I did this the first time, but this time I'm just kind of going for it. I'm looking at my other example. So this is a bit of a copy of a copy here. This one, I'm gonna let it, I'm just gonna let it be watery because I can always come grab from this green and let it bleed in there. So yeah, a little bit is gonna go a very long way here. Can y'all see my fourth leaf down there? Yeah, it's showing up. Okay. I love how all these colors, when they kind of touched each other, it kind of, I don't know, it's just reminding me of like a, a tie-dye t-shirt <laughs> in some places, just tie-dye period, doesn't have to be a t-shirt. Oh, look, some of my green touched the yellow somehow and it bled, but that's okay. If that happened to you, we're just going to let it, let it be what it is. And yeah, all these natural little moments that happen as the green bleeds around those are going to add to our our effect of the leaf here and yeah we will fill in these gaps in a bit it's not gonna look too weird if we fill in the gaps with you know some watered down uh yellow and orange etc in a little while so yeah i'm just letting this kind of natural kind of tie-dye effect happen and I'm not messing with it too much I'm really letting the the watercolor do its thing so if you're ever wondering you know how to get that kind of effortless effect that I got I mean I'm telling you right now it's just not putting too much effort into it <laughs> the key is the water says it right there in the name. I'm always joking about that in a watercolor class. It says it right there in the name of the paint, watercolor. But yet the biggest issue that I see folks running into with their watercolor painting is not using enough water. 
and then they get frustrated with it not looking a certain way. But you just literally got to add more water to it. Okay, let's use some of this burnt sienna next. And oh my gosh, I keep bumping the camera when I go to my water cups. Sorry about that, y'all. All right, so I, again, got it super watery with this burnt sienna, and I do want this to bleed. I want this burnt sienna to bleed into my green because my leaf has this, you know, it's like bleeding from green to brown there. Although my green on there has really faded since I photographed this, I feel like a couple months ago. So yeah, just getting some of that burnt sienna in there. Following my little sketchy shape of the leaf. We're about to add some burnt umber next. Some dark brown. We got our light brown, kind of yellowish brown. And feel free to use, you know, any other cool fall colors that you want. They don't have to be exactly the colors that I'm using, obviously. All right, and then we'll get the burnt umber. And yeah, that one really bled and did a cool thing. I'm just leaving it alone. It's not my business <laughs> what this watercolor does. I'm just along for the ride. Okay, this is feeling like I can go ahead and like it's dry enough that I can go ahead and start to get here at the edge. So I'm, you know, taking small little inching closer and closer to the the edge of the gap here and then yeah if it bleeds super heavily more than you want it to you can but yeah we're just making the leaf a little bigger instead of um you know filling in the gap you can go either way you can make the gap fill in that space i'm sorry make the background fill in that space that gap that we left or you know, just make the leaf a little bigger right there. Okay, and then this was the shadow, so I need to be mindful of that. What's the shadow on that leaf? Okay, getting brown up here. Oh my goodness, we are running out of time, y'all. It's going to be fine, though. I'm going to at least explain how I did everything on that other one, even if I have to bounce back and forth and use my other example here at the end. Yeah, I'm really just letting the watercolor guide me along. Uh, one thing that I am doing that I, I should mention you know, last week in the drawing class, we talked a lot about these edges. There's certain edges that I wanted to emphasize. So as I'm adding this brown, especially, I'm kind of really staying, I'm letting the edges kind of jump out a little more now. So I'm going a little more precise with the tip of, you know, the point on this round brush. I can get a pretty fine uh, line to happen with that. So I am being a little more deliberate about some of those edges. And I emphasize that quite a bit in the drawing class on purpose. All right, so I've still got a gap here. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the gap while well, before everything is too dry, that there's a you know an obvious gap. Um, so oof, that was darker than I thought it was gonna be. So yeah, see this green is dry enough that now I can go in with the yellow okra again. And I can go right up to the edge and add another layer and blend it in without, I mean, I gotta be careful next to this brown now, but I can safely go next to the green without it bleeding too much.
And then if it does bleed a little bit, then that's just going to help my gap from being too obviously, um, you know, a gap. But I kind of like the way the gap looks, I'm going to be honest. It makes it feel even more, you know, kind of devil may care in its application. It adds a certain quality that I like. So even on that other example, I can show you the, where the gap is still visible. Because even in my previous example, I was trying to be mindful of the, the time constraint of trying to do this in under an hour. Ooh, what did I do? That was much darker than I meant for it to be. Okay, so I'm just trying to bleed that around and just blend it out a little bit so it's not so obviously, you know, standing out against that first layer. And you can do the same thing, just add some water to spread it around. Okay, let's talk about this white ink for a second while all of this is drying a little bit because this is a little too wet now for me to... And I'm just going to pull that moment out because I don't like it. I don't like it. Not that it's bad. I just, I don't know. I wanted that to be kind of a clean line right there. I like those natural bleeds. I'm totally fine with it. I'm revising when I just said I don't like it in case you have one of those. Just, let's leave it alone. Okay, so let's get this white ink in here. I'm gonna use my little ceramic dish or you could use your palette as well. And let's get the white going. I love white ink. It's definitely, I'm a non-traditionalist when it comes to watercolor. I'm teaching a watercolor basics class right now. And it's so hard for me not to bust out, you know, some white ink or some white gouache because you can almost use it to correct, you know, like correction fluid like white out and fix and things like something like that. I could maybe put a little, put a little sparkle right there if I wanted to. I'm gonna add, you know, it almost feels like snow if I take, so I'm taking my liner brush and I'm bumping the camera again and I'm getting it all mixed up in there with my, my white ink, loading it up. And then I'm gonna hold my brush kind of tight in one hand and then I'm just gonna tap it with the other hand and I'm gonna let these little white, you know, like star splatter or little pixie dust, whatever you wanna call it, or snow um, fall across the leaves. And then we can use it to maybe add, you know, say there's a moment that you really didn't like, like something like that. I could do that and, you know, add kind of a fat one or I could uh, blur it out. And then it might feel a little cloudy or just kind of ethereal. I'm all about the ethereal quality in artwork. And if you check out, you know, my art, you'll see how much I love making things look like they're happening in a dream. So you can't miss an opportunity to make things feel dreamy. And that's how I do it is star splatter and ethereal clouds so I'm literally just painting some white ink there and then I'm just scrub, kind of scrubbing it with my little brush and letting it kind of bleed around so that it creates some, some cloudy business and then if you trust yourself with your uh, liner brush you know you're you've got a steady hand you could go through and use the white ink to add some of these little veins on the leaf. So like all those little veins, you could do it with the, the liner brush or I'm just gonna be like a cooking show here and skip to my original example. <clears throat> and show you how you could, when it's dry, you could use your white gel pen to do this. So I'm just, you know, I'm just tracing with the white gel pen, but just showing you how I used the white gel pen to put those, those in there. Here, let me draw a couple more. 
Okay, so once it's totally dry, you can draw on top of it with the white gel pen. Make sure you follow those contours, give it like a curve so that it feels kind of naturally, uh, you know, three-dimensional. And you can add white highlights wherever you want. And then the last thing that I did that I haven't covered yet would be, we didn't put the shadow in yet. And also I went around with my liner brush and the darkest brown, that burnt umber. And I did the stems with the burnt umber, so nice and thick. And again, once this is dry, you can do fill in those gaps in a way like we just did a second ago and like blend them out. You can use the white ink to, you know, blend any weird moments that happen there. But I also kind of used a little bit of some stippling here in some places. I kind of added some extra texture and detailed lines with the burnt umber. So with the white ink and the burnt umber, I kind of put some of these edges back in that were lost, like this little overlap moment, that sort of thing. And then, yeah, let's put this shadow in here. Let me move my camera so we can see that one. Oh, it just bounced right back where I had it. I just saw a comment about extending the classes. So yes, starting in December, we are extending my classes to be an hour and a half. Um, I plan these classes two months in advance. So we've had that plan in place for a while. It just, you know, since we were already two months planned out when we made that decision, we just have to wait until December. All the classes in December will be an hour and a half in length, three 1.5 hour classes instead of four one hour classes. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so just filling in the shadow here. Oh, thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that. And then I'm just, you know, making my uh, shadow kind of using brush strokes that feel like they're going in a straight line out to the left here so that it really feels like it's on a flat surface. And we can do another layer of this when this is dry um, and it'll show up a little darker than it just did. Um, you know, I always like to say when it comes to watercolor, it's like trimming your bangs or trimming your beard. Like you can always trim a little bit more, right? But once you've trimmed too much, uh, you can't, you gotta just wait, <laughs> right? But with watercolor, you can always add more if it's too light or yeah, if it's not as dark as you want it to be, but it's getting super wet, wait for it to dry. And you can always, you know, add a little more watercolor. You can always do another layer. You can do three, four, five layers if you want. But if you, you know, go whole hog with the first um, layer and then you let it get too wet and then you're super impatient with it, then, you know, you get really frustrated with and you're not maybe getting the product that you want, just let it dry. Let that first layer dry and you can always add more. So, you know, definitely everything we just did was like kind of first couple of layers, but when those layers dry, you can go back in, you can make the shadow darker, you can clean up some of those edges. The white uh, ink can help you fix any mistakes or add a little bit extra. And then when it's totally dry and you're done, that's when you peel off that tape. Okay, I'd love to see some of your examples. I see somebody saying they used a hair dryer. Um, that will make it dry faster, but it will take away the kind of natural. Sometimes it depends. Um, sometimes I don't like using a hair dryer because I feel like it takes away. It'll like blow the puddles around, and it it won't dry as like naturally as it would if you just leave it alone. Um, Okay, we have one minute. Does anybody want to hold up their examples and we can spotlight you? I meant to leave more time for this, but maybe if we can go one minute over, I'd love to see. I see Colleen's holding hers up. 
Um, if we can just spotlight some of these folks. Nicole, are you able to spot? Oh, there, there you are, Colleen. You're spotlighted now. Yes, look at that. It looks lovely. I love how big you went with some of those. Very nice. Um, can we spotlight some other folks? I see Barbara's holding hers up. Let's see. Ooh, I love all those greens, Barbara. That's really lovely. Yeah, and that gap. I love the gap. Like, I forgot to hold my spotlight, my example with the gap. But yeah, I kind of like how it looks. And you can always fill it in in a little while. Those are really nice and effortlessly painted. And I love those little edges that you got going there. All right. I see Emma's. Oh, oh, look at that one, Brittany. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, and I love your out of focus uh, leaf in the background. That one's so delicate. That's really lovely. Oh, I hope some of y'all share these on Instagram or Facebook and tag me so that I can maybe share them. Oh, look at that example. I don't know if it's the camera, but it looks like you got some blues and some purples in there. I love those colors. Yes, let's go. Let's get unrealistic with the color. I love that so much. Oh, those are nice and soft and delicate and bleeding so nicely. Really gorgeous work. Oh, hold it up, Emma. Oh, yes. Look how watery those are. Oh, wow. I really love the style of those. And even when it where it kind of bled, I love it. It gives it even more of that like kind of transparent ethereal effect. Ooh, that is really nice. And those colors that you used are lovely too. Let's see, hold it back just a little bit, Georgian. Oh, you're pointing your camera down, I see. Ooh, yes, see, I love how those bled into the background in a nice way. Yeah, the bleed into the background is not a bad thing. It does not bother me at all, especially when you let it dry and it just gives it that neat effect. Oh, those are lovely too, Sarah. Really nice. I wish we had more time to keep spotlighting y'all, but I want to respect everybody's time. So we'll go ahead and say good night. Thank you all for joining me so much. Please tag me if you share these on social media so I can hopefully see them again. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we see you next week for the, the color theory basics. Good night.